Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well, we've got another fun one for you today. We've got some floating modules here and we're not using any extra plugins today. We're just using a bit of CSS code and any code I write, I'll drop down below the video as usual. We've got these little floating modules here. They're all sort of floating at different rates. We've done this recently with some images too. When I actually hover over one, it's going to stop so people can get on the button. When we get off, it's going to go back. Same with all the other ones here. And that's a nice little eye-catching effect to have on your site. Really easy to do, so let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. And once enabled, let's go down to where we want to work. I've got a section here, the blue tab. Inside, I've got a row with three columns, the green tab. Let's just get rid of this row and we'll start from scratch. I've also got a code module in here with my actual code down the bottom there. That's in this same row. So if I get rid of this, it should get rid of all of it. Great. Well, let's add a new row. I'll use three again, but you can use as many or as few as you want. Put three columns in there and let's just put a call to action. This will work for any module you want in there. I'm simply going to use a call to action. Let's pop a little button in there too and change the background. You may have noticed there's no call to action. That won't appear till you put a button link in. So let's pop that in there. And as you can see, the buttons appeared. And let's just change that background color. I'm not too keen on that aqua. Okay, there we go. But all this is subjective. It's all up to you how you design yours. Okay. Now we've got that. I'm going to clone it a couple of times. Two little squares right there. There's once, there's twice. I'm going to drag them over to where I want them. One can go there. And one can go over here. Doesn't matter which one you drag across. They're all identical in this particular case. Okay, next thing we want to do is give these each a unique class name so we can target them with some CSS. So let's go in there, dark tab for the module. I'm going to go over to the advanced tab here. Going to go into CSS ID and classes. We want to use class for this today, so make sure you put this in class. And let's call it float mod for float module. And I'm going to put a one beside that one. I'm going to copy it, control C. I'm going to go into my next one. I'm going to go to the advanced again, CSS IDs and classes. Again, make sure you're in the class. I'm going to paste it in there. I'm going to change that last number to two. And I'll bet you can't guess what I'm going to do with the third one. Yeah, that's right. Over to advanced, custom CSS IDs and classes. Paste it in there, and we're going to call this number three. Now, because I'm only going to be using this effect on this page, I'm going to use a little code module for this today. But you can also put this in your additional CSS panel. If you go down to Appearance, Customize, it'll be there. Or you can go down to Divi and put it in the Custom CSS panel in the Options. It all ends up in the same place. So what I'm going to do is add a little code module, a little dark button to add a new module here. Now, as I'm using a code module, I've got to tell it that this is CSS. So I've got to open some style tabs. S-T-Y-L-E, closing, pointy bracket, and it'll put in a closing one for you. And these are the only things I can't put below the video because of the pointy brackets there. Inside here, I'm going to write my code. Now, if you're using the additional CSS panel or the custom CSS panel in the options, you do not need to put style tags in just when you're using a code module. Okay, well, we gave that one the class name. All class names have a dot or a period in front of them. Here's the dot. And let's paste that class name for the first one in there. Great. Now we open and close some curly brackets and tell it what we want it to do. Well, I want to create an animation so it's going up and down. And we have to give this animation a name. Let's call it FL mod for floating modulation perhaps or floating module and i'm going to call this one one also so we've got float mod one there and fl mod one here name of the animation that we're going to create this in a minute i want this animation to last perhaps five seconds five s 
But of course, timing is up to you. I want it to keep on going, so I'm going to say infinite. And I'm going to close it out, put a little semicolon there. Great. So we actually have to create this animation now. So if we drop down again, we're using keyframes to create this today. So we'll say at keyframes. And the name, which was FL mod one, the name of the animation, FL mod one, there we go. Now we can tell it what we actually want it to do. Again, we'll open some curly brackets and at the beginning of our five seconds, which is 0% when the page loads, basically, let's open some more curly brackets. What do we want it to do? Well, I want it to grow. So I'm going to use transform scale. Transform colon scale right at the end of the E with no gap. We'll open some curly surrounded brackets and inside the amount that we want it to scale. Well, actually, when it starts, I want it to stay at the same size as it is initially, which is one or 100 percent. Let's copy this a couple of times now. Control C to copy. I'm going to drop down. I'm going to paste it twice. At the 50% mark, or halfway along our five second cycle here, I'm going to increase it by 10%, which will be 1.1 of the size. And as you can see, it's already started to modulate there. Then when it gets to 100%, I want it to smoothly transition back to regular size again which is fantastic. Great, well, we got our first one going there, but because we got text and a call to action there, I'd like it to stop when they hover over it so that they can read the text better and click on the button. So to do that, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to copy our class name and the animation right there. Control C to copy. And don't forget all this code will be down below bar the style tags. I'm going to drop down a couple here. I'm going to paste that in there. Right after the one of float mod one with no gap, I'm going to put a colon and the word hover. We can create a hover state. Now, when they hover over it, I don't want it to have any animation. So I'm going to get rid of that. And instead of that, I'm going to just say none. Now, when I put my mouse on it, it'll stop. Exactly what I want. Great. Well, to make these happen, you can put the same class for all of these and they'll all do exactly the same. But to get the sort of floating effect, you want different timings. So I'm going to copy all of this now from the dot of our first class name there for the closing curly bracket of our hover state. Control C to copy again. I'm going to drop down. I'm going to paste it once. Now I'm going to change this to float mod two which is our middle class name for our middle one. Remember, we gave each of these call to actions float mod one, float mod two, float mod three. But I also want to change the animation name from one to two. And I'm going to change the timing. So we've got different float timings going on. So we'll call this one two. And let's make this one say four seconds. And we've got to change the two on the name of the animation just below there. So we've got two, two, and two. I'm going to change this hover to a two. Or oh, we could comma separate all the float mod hovers there, but I'm going to do them separately here. And again, I'm going to go down one more. We've got our second one going there. If I just move this out of the way, that's going at a different rate there. I'm going to go down to the bottom. I'm going to drop down a couple more. And I'm going to paste in that first one again. Here it is. And guess what? We're going to change that to a three this time. Three, three, and three. And we also need the three on float mod, mod hover there. Now they're all going and I'll change the rate. Let's perhaps make this one seven seconds or something like that. And we should go, should be good to go. So let's save our changes here. We'll save the actual page changes and let's exit the visual builder. And there we have it, guys. We've got three little modules floating at different speeds there. And as I say, that's a great little effect to have on your site. And this will work on tablet and mobile just as well. Hover effects on tablet and mobile sometimes don't work so well. They'd have to click on this to actually stop it and then click the button. 
but that's entirely up to you. And the same with these, they'll stop when we hover over. It's the same with that one. So there you go, guys. That's how to create some floating DV modules using a bit of CSS code. No plugins involved in this today. And like I say, that's a great little feature to have on your site. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, pop them down below. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a demo video. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.